All right then, my friends. So now we've created our header template and the footer template. And in that header, we have this button, add a pizza. Now, when a user clicks on that, ideally, we're going to show them some kind of web form where they can enter in a pizza title, some ingredients, maybe their email as well, and click submit. Now, when they do that, we want to take that data and do something with it. So how does this all work in PHP? So then on our website, we're going to have a web form at some point, which is going to take in the user's data to make a new pizza. And we might take in the email, the title and the ingredients of that pizza. Now, when they click submit, we want to take that data and we want to send it somewhere and do something with it. Right. We want to send it to the server. And then once we get that data on the server, we could do something with it, like save it to a database or something or verify that it's the correct type of data first. Now, the way that we do this, we send data from the browser, the client to the server is via a couple of different methods in conjunction with web forms in HTML. And those two methods are called get and post. You might have seen them banded around somewhere. So the main difference between these two methods of sending data to the server is how the data is sent, but they can both be used to send data to the server. So get requests sends data in the URL. So we see that data in the address bar at the top of a browser, and we'll see that shortly. Now a post request that sends the data under the hood in the request header, and that is hidden. We can't see anywhere, not in the address bar, not anywhere else. So this is considered a more secure way of sending certain types of data that you don't necessarily want to make visible. Okay. So we're going to take a look at both of these methods and sending data to the server via a web form using get and post in the code. So then the first step in creating this form is to create a page for that form to go on. And then we just need to make the HTML template for that page. So let's create a new file inside the tuts folder. I'm going to save this as add.php because we're going to use it to add a new pizza eventually. And uh, in this file, I'm going to first of all, just copy this stuff right here. And the reason I'm doing that is because we still need the header on this page and we still need the footer. We have our PHP tags up there ready in case we need to do any PHP code in the future as well. So anyway, let's now create the HTML for this form. And I'm going to be using some materialized classes to do this. And that's okay. We can use materialized classes because we're importing the header or including the header, which has that link to the materialized CSS style sheet. Okay. So then first of all, let's create a section. That's an HTML5 uh, tag. And we're going to give this a class of container. Okay. So inside this container, in fact, we'll also give this a class of gray hyphen text because I don't like straight black text on a white background. Don't think it looks great. I think gray text looks a bit nicer. Okay then. So we'll do an H4 first of all inside with a class of center. And then we'll give this a text of add a pizza. Cool. Now underneath the H4, this is where we're going to do our form. Now I'm going to give this a class of white because I want it to have a white background. That's a materialized class. And this form should also have an action. We'll talk about this later, but we'll leave it blank for now. And it should also have a method. And again, we'll talk about this later, but this is where we put either get or post whether we use the get method to send data or the post method to send data, right? So anyway, inside this form now, let's flesh this out. Um, we'll do a label first of all, and that's going to be for your email. And underneath that, we'll do an input field. And that's going to be of type text. We could do type email and have some front end validation automatically taken care of by HTML5, but I don't want to focus on that in this tutorial. So we'll just keep it as type text. And the name of this is important because we're going to use it later. I'm going to call this email. That's the name of that input field. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is just copy these dudes and paste them a couple of times like so. Now the second label is going to be the pizza title. We want people to give it a name. So pizza title. And then over here, the name of this input field, which is also of type text is going to be title. Then finally, we want the ingredients. And we'll say we want these comma separated. And the reason why we want that will become apparent later on in the series. We're going to do some kind of processing on that data when we get it. Okay. Then. 
So now we have our three input fields. And by the way, we need to give this a name. So call that ingredients. We have our three input fields. We also need uh, some kind of submit button. So I'm going to do a div first of all to put this submit button in and give this a class of center. Now we're putting the button inside here just so it centralizes itself by this class. Okay. So let's do another input field. This time it's of type submit because this type will give us a little button. Now the name is also going to be submit and the value is also going to be submit. Okay. Now I'm going to give this a couple of classes as well, straight from the materialize library, BTN to make it look like a button brand. So it gets that gold background color. We created that class ourselves in the last video and also a Z hyphen depth of zero, just so it takes away any kind of box shadow. Okay then. So that's our form template. Let's take a little look in the browser at how that looks so far. So go to forward slash add dot PHP and take a look. Mm, it's looking okay, but it still looks a bit flush to the edges. So let's just add a tiny bit of our own CSS inside the header. So inside the header, I'm going to say form to target our form. And then we're going to give this a max width of mm, 460 pixels. And then we'll give it a margin. And that margin is going to be 20 pixels top and bottom auto left and right. And then finally the padding as well, because we want some space on the inside of the form. And that is going to be about 20 pixels all the way around. So let's save that and refresh over here again. And that is looking better. Okay. So we have our add a pizza form now, at least the HTML of it. Now we can start to talk about the PHP and how we can send data that a user types into this to the server. So how are we going to send this data then? Well, like I said, we use one of two methods, either post or get. And the method I'm going to show you first of all is get. And remember, the get method sends the data in the address bar in the URL. So we're going to see that data sent up here. Now, not only do we need to specify a method attribute on the form, but we also need to specify an action because at the minute, if we submit this, we're saying, OK, well, yeah, we're sending a get request and we're going to send it to the server, but then what file is going to handle it on the server? When I get to the server, what file shall I run and pass this data to so it can process it or do something with it? And that is what the action attribute is right here for. So we're going to say we want the add, oops, not in capitals, add dot PHP file to handle this request. And notice that is the same file that is serving up this HTML template. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to fill all this out and it's going to send data to the server and we're going to see that data in the URL because we're using a get request. And when it gets to the server, because we've specified that this is the action, it's going to look for the add.php file again on the server. And then it's going to run that file. And if we have some PHP up here, that's going to detect that data coming in, then we can do something with it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. So what we need to do every time we load this file, or every time this file is run, we need to check if there's any data coming from the request, right? Because sometimes we might just come to the add page, add.php. We might not have sent any data. We might just be coming for the first time to this page. And when we do, we're still going to the server and requesting this page, but we've not sent any data, have we? We only send data to this page on the server when we click submit on the button down here. So sometimes when we request this file, we might not have data sent and sometimes we might have data sent. So we need to distinguish between those two types up here. If data is sent to us, we need to get that data and do something with it before we send the page back. And if there's no data sent to us, then we don't need to do anything up here and we just send back the HTML template as it is. Okay. So then how do we check if data has been sent to us? Well, we're going to use an if check first of all, and we're going to use an out of the box PHP function. And that function is called is set. Now the is set function checks whether a certain variable, if you like, or value has been set. Now what we want to check is if any data has been sent to us via the get method. Okay. So we use dollar sign underscore get in capitals which is an array. This is a global array in PHP. And when we make a get request using a form, 
all of the different parameters or data that we send is going to be stored on the server in this get variable, right? If we made a post request instead of get, it would be stored in a post variable. But this time we're making a get request. When we send it, the email is going to be stored in the get array. The title is going to be stored in this array. And also the ingredients, they're going to be stored in this array as well. So since it's just an array and it's going to be an associative array, we can grab those values. We can grab the email, we can grab the title, we can grab the ingredients, and we can also grab a value for this because we gave this a name, submit. So I'm going to check for submit. And by that, oops, not in capitals, submit. And by that, what I'm doing is checking if this has been initialized. If we click this and send data to the server, then the submit value right here will have a value inside this get array, okay? So if it has a value, it means that we've sent data to the server. We've submitted the form. So we're checking if that is set. If it is set, it means we've sent data to the server. And now we want to process that data. So we're going to run this code if that is set. If it's not set, it means we've not submitted any kind of form. We might have just gone to the page for the first time around, like gone to the URL up here or click this button to add a new pizza. And therefore, this code inside it will not run because this will not be set. And therefore, we'll just end up sending back the form to the browser. We don't care about this stuff if no data has been sent. This is only if we've clicked the submit button. I hope that makes sense. OK, then. so now we've done that. What I'd like to do is somehow extract the data that we send to the server inside here. So let's just echo these values. I'm going to echo and then dollar sign underscore get. And in square brackets, we now want the email property. And we'll do the same thing for the other two fields. So I'm going to say echo dollar sign underscore get. And this time we want the title. And also, finally, the same thing for the ingredients. So we'll pass in ingredients right here. OK, so this is just like before. When we looked at associative arrays, we passed in the key to that array to get the value. That's what we're doing here. We're passing in the key to the array, and then we're going to get the value of whatever the user has typed in to that particular field for that key. Hope that makes sense. Now, you're going to see several of these types of arrays in PHP as we go forward. These are called globals, and they all start with dollar sign, underscore, and then the name of that in capitals, right? So this is the first one we've seen, and we're going to talk more about globals in the future. So don't worry about the format of that just yet. Just know we use this get array to get data when we've sent a get request, OK? So let's run this now. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to type in my email. I'm just going to say Yoshi at the net ninja.co.uk. And then the pizza title will be the Yoshi Supreme. And then the ingredients, let's just put in tomato, uh, cheese, and eggs. OK, so let's submit this now and pay attention up here. I'm going to submit. And you see up here in the URL, all the data is there. It's on show. That's because we've used a GET request. Like I said, it shows in the URL bar. And now, because we've sent data, when we run this file again, when we go to the server, we're saying the action is add.php. It's going to find this file and run it again. It's checking if the submit button has been pressed, essentially. That's what this does. And then if it has, it's echoing these values. Well, it has because we just did it, and it's echoing these values, OK? But if we just go to add .php without entering the submit button, then we're going to see that nothing is output at the top because we're not sending any data. This is not set. So we skip out the code and we just send this stuff down here. OK, so that is the get method. I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time use a post method. And remember, I said when we use the post method, it's more secure because the data is not shown in the URL bar at the top. So let me just scoot this back one. And we're going to change this and this and this and this all to post in capitals. Everything else remains the same. But this time we're using the post array because we're going to change this to post. So we're sending data now to the server using the post method instead of the get method. So let's save that. And hopefully this should all work the same. 
and I'm going to do an email. I'll say Mario this time at the net ninja.co.uk and we've done that in caps never mind we'll call this the mario supreme and the ingredients are going to be tomato cheese and a mushroom since he likes those okay so submit and this time okay it's not working i think because we didn't refresh the page but we'll do that again let's go over here we'll refresh and say mario at the net ninja.co.uk and the pizza title mario supreme and then finally tomato cheese and mushroom submit that and hopefully now fingers crossed now we see it all here so it's all working except now we don't see it over here in the address bar okay it's hidden so that is considered more secure all right and that's how we use the get and post method to get data from a form and send it to a server then do something with it on the server all right now there is still a security issue here which would make this site vulnerable. So we're gonna cover how to combat that in the very next lesson.